Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render cubes of ice with Render Man in Maya. So to get started, I'm just going to create a polygon plane for our floor. And we're also going to chuck in a dome light. And we're also going to put in a key light or a, uh, what do you call it, rectangle light. Um, so we're going to be doing this with procedurals only. So the first thing we're going to do is create a base mesh for our uh, ice cube. Um, we're going to be subdividing this because uh, we will be applying some displacements to it. So uh, we're going to hold down right click, we're going to go to edge, uh, turn off soft selection, hold down shift and right click, then go to insert edge loop. And we're just going to create enough edge loops so this is still a sphere but uh, still a cube rather but it's kind of round so that's pretty much all we need and obviously you don't have to have a you know a perfectly cuboid shape if you don't wish um, you can make it whatever you want uh, slightly longer or, or a very specific shape but the displacement uh, will just really in the end add some surface to, uh, detail to it rather than so a lot of displacement all right, so let's create a pix uh, pixel surface shader and apply it uh, with by having it selected. When you click that, go up to the Hype Shade Editor, and we'll just map that out. So we'll call this Pixar Ice Cube. All right, so this is pretty simple. We're just going to turn the gain down on the Diffuse channel, and then turn the refraction gain, the reflection gain up uh, on the glass channel. So this is basically going to make it look like glass. And if we just run a quick IPR, you'll see what's happening. All right, so you'll see that you've got a glass cube there and it's not particularly exciting, um, but it will do the trick for now. I'm just going to turn that intensity of that dome light to like 0.2 probably. Um, we can probably turn the intensity of this up. Okay, so it's fine. It's not particularly exciting. It's not particularly ice looking at the moment either. So what we're going to do in the Hypershade Editor is we're going to create a Pixar uh, Displacement, one of these guys. Uh, we don't need the new shading group, but we will run the out color into the Displacement Shader input for our Ice Cube shader. And then we're going to create a Pixar Fractal. And we're going to run the out RGB into, uh, sorry, we're going to result, run the result F out into the Displacement Scaler. And if we um, just zoom out a touch, and if I run that IPR again, you'll see that it's gone a little bit crazy, but it is obviously displacement. Um, we don't want it to displace that much. So what we'll do is go to our displacement node. We'll just turn that down to like 0.1 and then rerun the IPR because displacement, um, displacement mats will always require you to refresh the IPR if you change something on them. All right, so you're starting to see that we're getting a lot of nice surface variation um, like an ice cube should have because obviously it's made of water, water moves until it freezes. Really, at the moment, you could pretty much go with that and it's gonna look, you know, pretty fine. The displacement's doing the trick, it's, it's nice and uneven. Um, but we can add one more thing to it to make it look even slightly better. So, if I create a vor noise, and run the result RGB into the diffuse color. Um, I can start to blend in some more of the diffuse. And the reason I want to do this is because um, if if you've ever looked at ice, you notice that, that like little air bubbles and stuff get trapped on the inside of it. Um, and just adding a touch of diffuse to it, as you can see here, if I increase it heaps, it starts to look silly. But um, at like sort of 0.15. Um, it just looks like there's little air bubbles and stuff trapped inside it. Um, and it also helps with it being able to see it overall. If you're finding that the refraction's a bit too much, you can cheat it, obviously. Um, feel free to go down to advanced, and it's on 1.5 at the moment, which is actually not ice. The refractive index of ice is actually 1.309 if you want to be scientific. Um, if you want to cheat it, you could probably go down to like 1.1 if you just want it to be a little bit smoother looking. That's probably a little bit too, too much. 1.2. Uh, actually, no, 1.3. 
1.3 actually looks good. So there you go. Let's do it right. 1.3 is the correct refractive index for ice. So you'll be happy to know for all you realists out there that that is physically correct. For a super, super close up, this probably won't hold up under too much discretion, but it's, you know, it's not the worst either. Um, you could probably go in further and change the fractal, but um, to be honest, how it is, it's, you know, it's not too bad. Um, but like I said, you will, every time you make an adjustment, you will have to um, update the IPR because this is plugged into your displacement map, obviously. All right, and finally, um, a couple of thoughts on lighting. Um, so psychologically, you, are led to believe through, through human experience that ice is cold so it doesn't hurt to use a cool color to light it also um, and obviously that's just using a blue color I'm just um, changing the color of the dome light to be blue you can add in as much or as little as you want you could also do the same for your key light depending on what you want to do um, but I might just keep that as a a pure white light just so it sort of provides a little bit of contrast between the blue and just having some white highlights rather than more blue highlights. Uh, but that is pretty much it. Um, if you wanted to obviously duplicate the, that, you could. Um, and it's also if you want to make it look like there is in fact three different ones, um, just cheat because cheating is winning um, when it comes to saving times. Um, you can just rotate them and you should be able to fool most people at a glance that they are actually three unique pieces of um, ice that way. Um, the only one thing I will mention with displacements, um, because you can't actually see uh, how much the surface is being displaced, you'll notice that I've got a bit of a space there. In the fine, in the render, it's obviously not got a space. Um, that's because the displacement's pushing away from both of these, the surfaces from both these pieces of ice. So uh, keep that in mind when you're arranging things. You might have to give it a little bit of extra space. And I probably actually want to turn that diffuse down a bit because um, I do want it to just be quite subtle but and having the diffuse once again um, also helps pick up a little bit of light so if you're trying to make that pop um, add in a little bit of diffuse if it's sort of just going to sit in a you know glass of water or something like that then maybe you don't need to do that maybe you don't even need the displacement at that point you could probably just go a normal map um, using a similar method method but I think the displacement is just sort of a, a nice example of how to get some fairly simple procedural ice so that's it. Hopefully uh, you've learned something there. Very quick one on, on this uh, today's tutorial. Uh, if you liked it, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these sorts of tutorials every week for products like Rain Man and other CD products. If you'd like to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.